Well, from a coaching standpoint, you're always uh, uh, concerned. Uh, you don't come out and, and play aggressive, and uh, our guys are really focused from the jump. You got to credit the uh, staff had a great game plan. Players did a great job executing, and I thought the uh, upperclassmen did a great job in making sure the focus and attention to detail was there. Uh, it was fun to watch, and um, not not many things uh, uh, to complain about this game for sure. Thank you, Coach. Questions for the student athletes and Coach Drew. Okay, start on the front row to the left. John Warner, Waco Tribune Hero. Matt, uh, how important was it to hit those early threes? You guys had a tough time against OU. How, how important was that just to kind of establish that? Uh, yeah, that was big. Um, for me personally, I've been in a little bit of a slump, and uh, my teammates were finding me. Dale found me early. I think Adam. Uh, and then I just felt a lot better. So, uh, and obviously that helped us win the game. Let's go to the right. right. Second row in the middle. Coach, obviously you've talked about in the past with some of those slow starts. Uh, Eric Kelly, by the way, Fox 44 in the front. Um, what, was, what changed about the pregame speech? today oh. that maybe led to a little bit of a better start? Yeah, trust me, it's not the speeches. If they're good and we don't play well or they're bad and we play well, that's all that matters is how they play. And these guys, uh, um, it's a player-led team. Uh, they did a good job uh, after last game. We didn't come out in the Big 12 tournament and play like we wanted to start the game. And I think that was the conscious effort of everybody to come out and be uh, a lot more uh, uh, aggressive in both halves. And we did that and uh, set the tone early. Let's go back to the left, second row. Bryce Cherry, Waco Trip. Matt, uh, you talked about the threes that you hit, uh, but you were also, you know, getting the passing lanes, getting some steals, you got offensive rebounds. Is that the best you've played at Baylor, 40 minutes? I mean? Um, I don't know. I think I've had some pretty good games, but I think that was a pretty good one. And, uh, I mean, this one was pretty. This one was a lot easier, I would say, because they were playing in a zone, and my teammates were just whipping the ball around and finding me. So I really didn't feel like I had to do too much. I just, you know, stood there, and then they found me. So, yeah. Okay. Go back on the right, third row. Uh, Kendall Count, Sigum three six five. Jeremy, uh, two parter. How the pink hair went out today, and were you kind of consciously going into this game looking to get your three-point shot going? Uh, <laughs> I actually uh, made it pink yesterday, so uh, it was kind of impulsive, but uh, I wanted to surprise <laughs> my teammates. Um, and then, yeah, I feel like I was also in a little bit of a slump, um, and we had a, quite a few days to just work on your shot, work on different stuff. So uh, I think we've all been working hard, and it shows on the court. Far right, front row. Stephen Hawkins with the AP and Jeremy. I told you I said I was going to ask you this question. I was going to ask you about that assist or, or that play at the end of the first half. And then right. Matthew, tell me about you, what you saw and how that first half ended that play. Yeah, um, you know, I got the rebound and uh, I saw Matt. I didn't really pass it to him, but uh, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> it was weird. I didn't really see what was happening. I thought it was like a rebound or something. And then all of a sudden the ball was just like right in front of me. Right. And I was like, wow. I'll take it. That was great. <laughs> On the left, second row. Uh, Kevin Locke with Sikkim Sports. Uh, Flo, your development in your offensive game, I know I asked you about this yesterday, but even more so today, is it just a matter of just being comfortable with looks and just having confidence going up strong, knowing that you can finish? Or what have you seen from yourself really over this last month? Uh, I mean, it's just improvements. Just give, first of all, I give credit to my coaches, you know, just believing in me and just keep working at it, you know, even after practice, <clears throat> working on the focusing and finish off the top of the glass. But I mean, it's just my teammates, like, like they said, teammates just gonna find me in the right places and just finish my breakfast, like I like to call it. Second row on the right. Uh, Curtis Quillen, Casey, in Channel 6 in Waco, also the guy who had the phone debacle yesterday. Scott, I know you would have <laughs> liked to be playing on Saturday in Kansas City last week, but do you think that maybe those few days off and that rest helped you guys today? Well, definitely, I thought the, uh, the legs were fresh. The guys had worked on their, uh, got some more reps shooting-wise, uh, had some confidence. And I, I thought, uh, uh, I mean, it was really fun to watch. Uh, they really shared the ball. And uh, like you said, Flo, um, seven for nine, opened things up on the outside. 
and then the outside shots were falling and they were really good looks. So um, when, we, when we get good looks like that as a coach, then, then uh, you're confident uh, uh, um, they're doing a good job sharing the ball and taking the right ones. In the back. Uh, Jeff Kolb with Fox 4 in Dallas. A uh, question for Coach and a question for the players. Coach, you said not a lot to complain about in this game. When your team is expected to take care of business and they do like this, mm -hmm. what does that tell you? And then for you guys, uh, the crowd seemed pretty uh, – there were not a lot of empty seats. Mm -hmm. Pretty great crowd. What, what did you make of the atmosphere here today? Well, first and foremost, it's March Madness, and uh, you expect the, the unexpected. So uh, every win is a blessing, and uh, you, you, if you're not ready to play, you're done for the year. So I credit these guys being ready and focused and um, making sure we put our best foot forward. I'll let them address the crowd. Uh, the crowd was pretty awesome because last year we won the championship, but like in some ways we felt like we didn't get the full experience. So just being able to have that atmosphere again, it just, it just feels a lot more fun. I mean, the crowd was really good, uh, especially for me, considering my parents were here for the first time. So, you know, after the game, after the buzzer came off and then went off and then just walking on the side, seeing them smiling and cheering, it, was, it, was meant, it meant a lot to me. It was special. Yeah. To me, it's exciting just seeing all those, all those people watching us. is you know, a blessing and it's very fun. Good deal. Front row on the right. Flo, just Greg Riddle at the Dallas Morning News. Flo, just to follow up on that. What was it like playing in front of your parents for the first time in college, and how much motivation did that give you? Uh, I mean, it gave me a lot of motivation, but I mean, when, when I saw them for the first time, like on the stands, it was kind of weird. Kind of shot two air balls during the warm up, but I was like, hey, listen, just be yourself. <laughs> just be yourself, everything will take care of it. And yeah, I just went out there and just played, and it was just, it was just overall fun atmosphere and stuff. Back on the left, so we'll go to Mac after we, uh, right behind you there, Mac. Yeah, Jonah Javad with WFAA. Uh, thankfully, these two guys have kind of already led the questioning here, but Flo, to follow up on that as well. Um, I actually spoke with your parents before the game, but we had to use your older brother as a translator. Um, how often, how, how do you, uh, do you speak French with them, and what are your conversations like, at least leading into this week with them, knowing that they would eventually arrive here today? Uh, I mean, the one thing I like about my family is like, I don't, like, there's not a lot of pressure about, you know, the stuff that happens in the court. For them, it's just more like family environments, like having fun, like we enjoyed it. Even after this game, like, when I see them again, it's not going to be like I'm the superstar who, you know, played basketball. It's more like you're just that little brother who's, you know, who's the youngest in the household. But overall, this is fun. But I mean, obviously, the hardest part, too, is like the fact that they don't really speak English. So my brother always has to be there to translate, and they just, they basically just see stuff, smile, and then that's their communication language. But overall, it's just, it's, it's just amazing to have them around. Uh, Mac Engel, Fort Worth Star-Telegram. Question for Matt and Scott. Because of the last two years in COVID and all this great fun, did this finally feel like the, the way the NCAA tournament normally feels like? Matt, you can start with that. Yeah, uh, like I said before, it was just super fun having that environment. And uh, you know, I'm just thankful to be able to play in March Madness again. <clears throat> to me, it, it, when you first arrived and you saw the other team's bands around there and, and there were people uh, uh, in the hotels and uh, uh, it just uh, – people bring energy and excitement. So uh, uh, from a coaching standpoint, um, then we got to make sure uh, uh, we have our own challenges with that, making sure we stay focused and uh, – uh, with the distractions that come with that at the same time, uh, it sure is fun to play in front of people and see family, friends, and loved ones. Okay. We've got about five more minutes left with the Bears. We'll go second row on the right. Coach Eric Kelly with Fox 44 in Waco. In terms of Matt, how much can, what can that do for your offense the next couple of weeks if he can continue to shoot like he did today? I, I think uh, uh, shooting, can, it's going to come and go. The whole key coaching is, is it the right shots. And if they take the right shots, um, we're going to get offensive rebounds if we miss. And we have confidence in our, in our guys that from a coaching standpoint. It's about trying to come up with schemes and ways to make sure they get the right shots. And uh, again, uh, these guys all work really hard on their craft. They, they're, they're, they're serious hoopers. They, they care about uh, uh, and they're perfectionists. They want to do well. So um, uh, I don't know if he'll have 40 next game or if he has a, a, a 10. Uh, other people will step up. And um, that's, that's what it takes in a great team is you got to have uh, a different people. Otherwise, you just key on one or two guys, and, and you're losing. Okay. Back on the right. Mm -hmm. uh, Scott, Jack Allen with 
Channel 25 in Waco. I was just wondering, you said this is kind of like a new season. How nice was it to start that season on such a hot streak? And how do you kind of keep that momentum now at this point going into the next round? Well, I think uh, it, you always feel uh, good after a win, and especially when the team plays well. At the same time, we have enough returning players, and they'll do a great job in talking and educating the other guys uh, that haven't been in this situation. Uh, this is a one-game tournament. It's not a four-week tournament, three-week tournament. Uh, if you're not ready to uh, Saturday, then season's over and it's done. So uh, uh, really, it's about uh, locking in and making sure you're giving yourself every, every chance possible to be successful uh, in that next game. Right. We'll go to a question on the Zoom from Daniel Rodriguez. Uh, Daniel Rodriguez with this league with Daniel. Uh, my question is for Coach. Um, you, know, you guys had a great game right now against Norfolk. Is there anything you see you, you, the team can improve on as now you're winning the winner between Carolina and Marquette? Oh, there, there's always things you can improve on. Uh, uh, I know rebounding, we missed some block, block out assignments. Um, no one plays a perfect game, uh, but the grand scheme of it, uh, uh, we played well. We did what we needed to do, which is win in advance. And now it's uh, all about uh, preparing, getting ready, and making sure we're in the best shape possible for the next game. Okay. Any more questions in the room? One more on the right-hand side, about halfway up. Uh, Scott, you all played through some early foul trouble quite well tonight. If the mm -hmm. games get called a little bit tighter than they do in the Big 12, do you want to keep staying as aggressive defensively, or do you have to kind of pull back? How's that sort of work for you all you feel like going forward? Yeah, good question. I think uh, uh, we're, we're going to err on the side of aggression. So at the end of the day, uh, uh, um, we can always dial it back. It's hard to dial it up. Okay. Any more questions for the Bears? OK, we'll go one more in the front on the left. And we'll let you guys go. Yeah, Scott, you got a whole bunch of guys in at the end. How beneficial do you think that could be, not only getting them some experience, but also saving these guys' legs? Uh, uh, hopefully it's uh, beneficial in multiple ways. One, uh, uh, help those guys with experience and be prepared and ready if called upon. And then two, hopefully these guys uh, uh, um, have more gas in the tank. And uh, we're just praying for a quadruple overtime game next. <laughs> Scott, All right. would, you, would you prefer to uh, play Shaka just because you know him better and have played against him several times? We're just glad to be playing, and whoever that is, we'll prepare and put our best foot forward. Sorry, like the, I didn't see like the shades, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> always. Men, thank you. We'll see you in the round of 32. Thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs>